I got a request to review this kit by EcoBerty. I will share my opinion and design a custom diagram to improve usability. I will show you what it can run and check if it's properly sized. I'm Nick, author of a book about off-grid solar power with over 2000 happy reviews. Let's get started. Here's what you'll get for $460. Two 100 watt solar panels, a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium battery, a 30 amp PWM charge controller, a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter, 16 feet PV wires, battery cables, charge controller cables and solar panel brackets. One thing that stands out immediately is the lack of fuses. I will show you how to add these later in the video. EcoWorthy doesn't provide a wiring diagram, so let's create one. We'll connect the panels in parallel, because the PWM charge controller is more efficient when the panel voltage closely matches the battery's charging voltage. The VMP, or voltage at maximum power of the panel, is 20 volts, and the battery charging voltage is 14.6 volts. That's a 5.4 volt difference which is ideal for a PWM charge controller. Let's upgrade the system with my recommended components. Fuses, a shunt, AC distribution, proper grounding and a DC fuse box. Let's go over the key additions. I'm adding a 30 amp fuse for the charge controller and a 75 amp fuse for the inverter. This significantly improves system safety. The fuse I'm using is a marine rated battery fuse, or MRBF. It's mounted on the main battery terminal. Next, I would add a shunt. This allows you to monitor the state of charge like a fuel gauge. The main battery negative connects to B- and the other side, which is called P- becomes the new main battery negative. I made a video on how to wire the shunt, so check it out for more information. A DC fuse box connects to the main battery through the 30 amp fuse. It's perfect for running 12 volt DC loads like a fridge, USB sockets or a DC pump. Check out my video on wiring a DC fuse box for detailed instructions. Add the ground fault circuit interrupter, or GFCI, on the inverter's AC output. This ensures safety and includes a 10 amp breaker. Since the maximum current is 5 amps, 10 amps is sufficient. Use 14 gauge or 2.5 mm square wire. Ground the solar panels and the inverter case to a grounding bus bar. Then, Connect the bus bar to the battery's negative terminal. This minimizes stray voltages, reducing the chances of electrical shock when touching a metal surface like the solar panels. Adding a ground neutral bond at the AC out ensures the inverter's AC output voltage is 120 volts between L1 and neutral instead of 60 volts. It's crucial for proper GFCI functionality. For more details, watch my video series about this subject. Adding these components makes the system safer and more practical. I have linked all the components in the description. Let's answer a practical question. What can 200 watts of solar panels power? I can't post a video without doing some math. So, Let's run the numbers. Let's calculate the potential energy harvest of two 100 watt solar panels in Houston, Texas, averaged over the year when the panels are tilted at 28 degrees. This data can be obtained for free on a website called PV Watts. The first column is the month of the year. The second column is the amount of sun hours per day. And the third column is the energy harvested over a month. 
we must also include the efficiency factor of the PWM charge controller, which is about 70%. Let's divide the year's average of 285 kilowatt hours by 365 days, then multiply by 70%. We get an average of 550 watt hours per day. This is what the daily energy harvest looks like in watt hours spread over the year. If you like the video so far, consider liking it. It helps my channel grow so I can make more videos like these. The next question is, what can you power with 550 watt hours per day? We will have to do a reverse load calculation. The inverter uses 10 watts standby power. Multiplying that over 24 hour period, we get 240 watt hours. We can immediately see that you should turn off the inverter when not using it, because it will consume half of your daily energy harvest. Let's say we only power on the inverter when it's needed. In my previous video about the portable DC fridge, we saw it used 180 watt hours per day. We will also power a 50 watt laptop for 3 hours, which is 150 watt hours. But it runs on the inverter. So we must include 10 watts idle power consumption for 3 hours, which is 30 watt hours. In total, we get 180 watt hours for the laptop. We also run a 50 watt DC pump for the sink, which takes 5 minutes daily, or 0.08 hours, so it becomes 4 watt hours. We run a few LED lights with a power rating of 10 watts for 4 hours, this is 40 watt hours, and in total we have about 400 watt hours of daily power consumption. The next question we must answer. Is the system properly sized? Off-grid design theory suggests that 1. Solar panels should recharge the battery in one day. And secondly, the battery should support 3 days of autonomy. As we have seen before, 200 watts of solar panels can harvest an average of 550 watt hours per day in Houston, Texas. But the battery size is 1280 watt hours so the solar panels cannot recharge the battery in one day. If we want 3 days of autonomy with a 1280 watt hour battery, we should limit our power draw to 426 watt hours per day. This is close to the power consumption we just calculated previously. So, to make the system properly sized, I recommend adding another 200 watts of solar panels. So you will harvest 1100 watt hours per day, enough to recharge the battery. Always use ferrules when attaching wire to the charge controller. The instructional video shows a very sloppy connection with bare wire. Their marketing material isn't great, but the products have good reviews. Do you like this system? And what would you do differently? Let me know in the comments. Consider subscribing for more videos like this and visit my website for free off-grid solar power diagrams. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.